guys. What have we got up there? Oh, chapter seven. Then the C word. Compromise decision quadrant. No, it's, it's the C word. Compromise. Compromise. That's what the buyer's decision quadrant is all about, Ben. Compromise. Ah, love it. There's going to have to be some like compromise. Trade-offs. And I just want to say that every episode I've ever done of location, location, location Australia, relocation, relocation Australia and escape from the city has been all about this chapter right here. Oh, I like it. Hey, Bryce, did you know your dog's behind you is having a little scratch on the ground? And So can you introduce your dog to everyone? Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, we're a little bit out of focus, but here we go. There's ah. Nala, so she's interested in talking about the buyer's decision quadrant as well with us today. So, but, um, mate, this is a uh, oh, this is this is uh, the, the the reason I set it up for that, Ben, is because I'm forever having conversations with anyone who appears on any of those shows yeah. around which of these four areas in this quadrant that they're going to compromise on. So I'm excited to talk about this today because any property buyer, whether you're an owner occupier or an investor, should be um, familiar with this. But before we get there, Ben, yes, mate. we have been reading from the Armchair Guide to Property Investing. This is the book that we wrote back in 2016. The reason we're doing it now, Ben, is because we're so excited that these concepts are evergreen. Correct. So, they are as relevant in 2020, Ben, as they were in 2000 or well, end of 2015 when we wrote it and 2016 mm -hmm. when we published it. So previously, we have gone through six other chapters, Ben, which the first one was building your own knowledge base. Second mm -hmm. one was the psychology and investing. Chapter three was the five essential steps that you need to start. So that was the foundation. Yep. Then we've been going through the theory and the science. So the first bit of that was the fundamentals. Uh, the second one was the property investment formula, Ben. That was yes. in chapter five. The big one. Yep. Chapter six was the psyche behind price. And chapter seven, to round out part two, Ben, is all about the buyer's decision quadrant. So um, mm. let's uh, let's talk about it. Where, where do you want to start? Well, I think we would normally start on the one that probably has the biggest challenge, Bryce, where the compromise has to be the most, and that's got to be price. It's got to be budget. It's got to be so, budget. This is so, the one that's most fixed. Should we set it up? Should we set yeah, up sure. what the quadrant is? Yeah, yeah, good. So there is price, location, land content, and dwelling quality or yeah. choice of dwelling, really, isn't it? It's all about that. So the one that's the most fixed is definitely price. And that's why we lead off on that because your budget is your budget is your budget. Um, some budget. people have a little bit of movement in their budget, Bryce, but not a lot, right? And no. so. Um, that's the one that sort of is going to dictate potentially the other three quadrants in terms of, you know, what you get for your money, right? So um, so I always like to start with that one. I reckon there's two things in the price, Ben. There's, um, you, you say it's fixed and I agree 100%, but I generally think there's two prices for most people. It's their borrowing capacity and their comfort capacity. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes their borrowing capacity exceeds their comfort capacity. But generally speaking... They, most people can't go past their borrowing capacity because it requires an inheritance, it requires a lotto win, mm. it requires some form of um, X factor event that, that the lands them in a, in a pot of cash. Otherwise, that one is generally unfixed. So, Ben, what I want to do is for anyone who's listening to this Facebook Live, I want to know um, if you've just recently purchased a property, um, which do you think of these four? Did you and your partner, or if you bought it on your own, it's fine, but which of these four out of price, location, um, size of the land and quality of the dwelling. Which of those do you, did you did you compromise on? Because we'd love to know, and it's okay if you're not sure on the other three, because we'll get to them. But um, uh, we'd certainly love to, uh, to. So if you put that in the comments below, it's an awesome question, Bryce. Because I suspect what's going to come up is, look, we went in with a budget, but we probably spent a little bit more than that. That's from my experiences. You know, the days when I was broking uh, day to day, I'd. Uh, Get people across the other side of the of the desk, and I'd say, all right. Well, so, what's our budget? Here's what we can borrow. Now, did you realise you could actually borrow a little bit more as your dog goes crazy, which is great. Um, a little bit more, right? And then what I do is I then say, right, I'm just letting you know that there's a little bit more because they go off into the search portals and they think for five hundred and eighty thousand they're going to get this type of property, but when they realise when they get out in the field that the quoting is a little bit lower than what they actually sell for. Um, you know, they're normally knocking on the door, 
about a week later and going, hello. About that extra. Um, about that extra. <laughs> what? So yeah. I learned pretty quickly to actually say, look, I know you want to get this one for 550 to 580. That's the sort of, but I'm going to do the pre-approval to 600 because the expectation is going to be that you're going to probably find something that's going to be at the upper end of that. Uh, and it's like anything, we go into a car yard and we say, well, that's the standard model. That's the mid-range. Well, that deluxe model, gee, it's got yes. a little bit more bells and whistles. And so, I mean, we, stretch, yeah. yes. <laughs> so that's yeah. how it plays out. So, so I think that's an important one that when you are doing it, but there is a ceiling. Most of us have that ceiling in terms of what we can afford. Yeah, so that's price. The next one is location, Ben. Now, um, the, the the three key words in real estate have always been uh, the three L's, Ben, location, location, location. And yes. um, you see it all the time where people with face, um, they, they, they get teased with the location they want to be in. Um, and then as part of television um, template, we take them to a further out suburb, Ben, with a nicer yeah, house. Yes. And um, we try and entice them with the um, the idea of, of um, more house, shinier taps, newer carpet, all that sort of stuff, but they have to compromise on where they want to be. And let's be honest, uh, eight and a half out of ten times, they, they generally want to go back to location, and it, um, which is why we've come to the conclusion and been sharing on our podcast for many years now that uh, location does all of the heavy lifting at about 80%, Ben. It's almost Pareto's principle there, 80-20, yeah. 80 on the... 80 on the location, 20 on the, on the dwelling. Well, because once you put those two components together, you then lead into that next component, which is the sort of what type of dwelling and what uh, what land content am I going to get for my money? And, and that's, I mean, ultimately it's land that appreciates in value. Um, that's for sure. Um, so what with my budget and my location, how much land do I get for my money? And then what dwelling is going to sit on that land? Yes, folks, so let us know if you've heard compromise on price or location before. Um, and also let us know if, um, uh, if you've bought something recently and, and did you, did you uh, tempt yourself by going a couple of suburbs out? Um, or were you were you tempted to just go, no, nah, I'm going to stick with the location. So what did you compromise on? And maybe share some of the story in the uh, comments box below. But Ben, we're reading from our best-selling book, over 20,000 copies. Um, what we're suggesting to anyone is if they want to get a copy, Ben, go to uh, Amazon, um, all of the online portals. You can go to a bookstore and pick up a coffee. Um, our recommended retail price is just under 30 bucks. But if you want to get a free copy, um, all you need to do is go to the armchairguide.com.au. Uh, I was going to say it's a property investing then, but that was going to be a lie. Just it's, here, uh, isn't if it? you look at this link, it's yeah. magic. Yeah. Yeah. There I can't is. see it, but I'm sure it's there. Is it there, Ben? <laughs> I think so. I can't see it either, but I've been told it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, folks, so we, we've uh, we've gone to our publisher. We, we asked them to let us buy some copies. So we've bought the book um, for you. Um, and if you're prepared to pay for the shipping, all you need to do is tell us where to send it. Um, give us the shipping money and we will pay for the book and send that off to you. And so um, uh, get that. So, okay, we've gone from uh, price, mm -hmm. we've done location. What's next, Ben? So what's next in terms of location is land content, Bryce. So mm -hmm. this is basically bang for buck. What mm -hmm. are you going to get in terms of price of land uh, and that content piece and what's going to sort of fit onto that land is the way in which I look at this. Like, in, in other words, I might be able to, able to afford an apartment in this location. I might be able to afford a townhouse. Uh, I might be able to put, uh, afford an old villa. Um, or I might be able to, I might be blessed in terms of my budget and the location. Then it could be also a beautiful freestanding house by itself, right? So with all of that sort of coming into it, there is a land to asset ratio that we're talking about there. And also, why do I want to go here? Because what we are ultimately talking about in the buyer's decision quadrant is demand. We are actually, if you think about it more broadly, we're asking of a, a demand conversation here. So, and we all know that price movements are a product of limited supply and high demand. And so we are trying to tap into the psyche of the buyer in terms of how they make the decisions. And that's why Bryce says, you know, this is your domain skill, uh, because as you know, as one of Australia's leading buyers agents, 
you know all about this in terms of the conversations and the compromise uh, that people are also doing. Yeah, because it's kind of, isn't it, if you've got a price and a location that's fixed, all of a sudden it just becomes a funneling exercise from highly desirable is the four-bedroom house with a bit of land and uh, somewhere to, you know, swing, um, you know, a cricket bat out the back. But it, if, if your price and your location are fixed, it, it just starts to become a, a, an exercise on, okay, that's Nirvana. And you may end up in a one-bedroom flat, Ben, with the least amount of land content based on the fact that if you're in a highly desirable suburb and your price is fixed, that could dictate um, – and you want shiny taps, that might dictate that you're in an apartment. Or if you're prepared to have something that has um, some renovation potential that's a bit older and a bit more run down, you might be going from an apartment to a townhouse or a villa mm -hmm. unit. Or likewise, if you, if you are at entry level for a house – um, but you want more land content and you're prepared to compromise on the next one we'll talk about in a second, um, That really becomes, so it really becomes a funneling exercise for you. Um, and it does, and there was a good question there from Matthew, I think, before about that in terms of asking around capital growth and compromise in terms of new and shiny and flash versus uh, a, a, an asset that you can add value to. So I think from that point of view, um, that's where the, the two bottom points of our of our quadrant are, okay, I can't afford that dream home. I'm going to have to compromise if I want that location. And why you also see uh, predominantly a lot of interest in um, ugly ducklings or renovators delights in the great locations because that sees those people who dream of that land content in that good location to try and get into that particular market. So there's there's a lot of competition, which sometimes you, leads to the property being bought at a higher price point when when you wanted to add that value in the first instance because there's a lot of emotion around getting into that location. Yeah, true. So we've got uh, Ben, uh, Ben Matters said, quality is compromised. So we are able to increase the value of the property through further investment. Hmm? Well, I like mm -hmm. it. So keep them coming, folks. Let us know if you've had to compromise, if you moved a couple of suburbs out. Um, which of the three quadrants so far you have you have compromised on? We are, of course, talking about the Armchair Guide to Property Investing. Ivis will put a link up on the screen if you want to get a copy. We'll give you a free one, Ben. If you sell us where to, if you tell us where to send it. But uh, the last one of the quadrant, uh, Ben, if we've gone price, location, size of the land, number four is bring it home, mate. Come on. Well, it's, it's the quality of the, of the dwelling, basically. So what we're talking about is um, this compromise that we want to potentially make. Um, and so the way in which I try to describe this is in some relationships where people go into a property, um, they, can, they can visualise themselves living in that property and hosting dinner parties and creating memories in that particular property as opposed to sort of going into that ugly duckling or renovator's delight that I was talking about before, where they just cannot bring themselves, oh, this is honey, we are not buying this property, it's an absolute dump, I've got more important thing, I, you know, how do I socially feel about that asset? Now, the husband or the wife could see the vision in the property, but the other party's not interested, that can often be the case as well. So there's potentially compromise in terms of, and I've said to you all along, and I'm a big believer in this, if you can buy the ugly duckling and turn it into a black swan, and you're in the best location you can get in and you get a good land content, that's a pretty good compromise, right? Mm. That's a pretty good win if you can get into those locations and still fit mm. it into the budget. But in but in most cases, uh, there are going to be buyers who want a walk-in turnkey solution and their property's done for them. And there's going to be other buyers who are willing to put a little bit of, you know, good old hand and grease oil into uh, getting, the, getting the property hand up. Hand and grease to, oil. Hand and grease oil, is that the way you say it? Um, I thought that was a bit of elbow grease, yeah. Well, that's the one I'm looking for, a bit of elbow <laughs> grease. <laughs> so you put a bit of elbow grease into it and you get to an outcome that you're looking for. But you still, there's still always going to be a compromise attached to that. All right, we've got some uh, feedback here, Ben. Stephen uh, Butchers has said, we compromised a little bit with the location. We would have loved to be a bit closer to town, but over the years it hasn't been too bad. Value has gone up. An area is growing constantly. That's a good one. Oh, that's a nice um, one. Thanks, Stephen. Dominic has said, just bought a house, compromised on the location to move closer to family and mates, plus the golf course, Ben, with oh, a... That's a plus. Yeah. 
Happy with the golf course. Yeah. And then the last one from Aunt Dan says, we brought an average house in the best suburb in our town. Ooh, that's textbook. We like that, yeah. uh, Aunt. Yeah. Uh, in our town, and it's still improved in value. We are very happy. Five minutes to work, children walk to school, Ben. So there, there you, go. you go. It's resonating with people. People, if you're buying real estate, you need to know the buyer's decision quadrant. And uh, our advice, Ben, is you need to know the buyer's decision quadrant before you start searching with a significant other. Because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you need to know in advance what you're going to compromise on expectations you need to understand each other's expectations yeah um, yeah. and what they're out to in move the on. <laughs> because somebody's got to move because yes. yeah, i've never seen perfect alignment um in these conversations there's always got to be some wriggle room and compromise yeah. well said ben and what i've always said is this i've rarely seen 10 out of 10 properties people who have unlimited budgets can often get close to a 10 out of 10 because they've just got they can just throw money at the solution but for most of us mere mortals yeah. um there's not 10 out of 10 properties so um look for seven and a half to eight and a half nines and they are they are consistently going to do um what you need them to do so they are they are shelter uh they aren't perfect uh, we need to compromise on something so just to round that out again uh, uh, we've got Ivis giving me a funny look there, but um, oh, just, just the that quality out. of the good old internet. We're just battling through that, but we're pretty good. We'll keep going. Oh, is that, is that, is that, I just can see out of the corner of my eye this panic, but um, yeah. So there you go, folks. Uh, chapter seven is the buyer's decision quadrant and how that plays into the actual purchase of the asset. Uh, makes it really important. Ben. You are going to compromise on at least one of them. That's the takeaway yes. here. Yeah, maybe, so maybe page, two. page number 154, Ben. So if you want to have a look and play along at home, um, we're going to put some links in the comments below to let you know what the previous Facebook Lives we've done, Ben, with the previous six chapters. Um, so you can go back and watch those. Um, but if you do want to get a copy, as I said, um, hopefully Stiggy will help me out here. There'll, there'll be a link on where to go. Um, Ben's letting us know there. Or just go to your bookstore, Ben. Go to your bookstore, pick up the yep. copy. Um, and pick it up. So there you go. Any any closing any closing remarks from you before we uh, head, to, well, head to home? So, so what have we covered so far, mate? What have we covered? And I'll have a little sneak peek in terms of the next live. Well, mate, when, when we we are about to step it up big time because we are going to go from part – that's that's conclusion of part two. Part three is all about the action, Ben. So we are going to Ooh. prep and get ready because we say how to retire on $2,000 a week, Ben, right? Yes. So we're yes. about – we're about, to, we're about to prep and get ready on what that looks like. So stick Brilliant. around, folks. Um, if you're not, if you're seeing this Facebook Live and you're not following the Property Couch, just hit the little like button so that you get notified. Um, and we'd love you to do that. But um, Ben, each and every week we have a podcast. We've got one coming out this afternoon. We had a chat with uh, the CEO of the Property Council of Australia. Is it Property Council of Australia or Property Council Australia? Uh, no, it's of, but they just they just uh, they call themselves Sol uh, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So P PCA, yeah, PCA. Public Council of Australia. But yes, it was, a, it was an amazing chat. Ken very Morrison, yep, very insightful. Ken Morrison is exceptionally intelligent, articulate, and knows his stuff. Um, so that's on uh, in a couple of hours. We'll release that um, this afternoon on um, how to get uh, um, our property market back on track with the seven point plan. So um it's exciting but uh, should check it out but uh, there you go folks um thanks for sticking around uh, i hope you enjoyed that the buyer's decision quadrant let us know um send us a note um, send ping us on socials let us know which one you've compromised on keep leaving the comments in the messages below ben but uh until then we will uh, see you on our, our podcast each and every thursday and you can check that out at thepropertycouch.com.au